I'm Yoon from You and Me, and I'm here with Jake from the Stiff Little Fingers in the Z Bao in Nuremberg. And I've got a few questions for him, and we'll have a start. When you started, what made you come to punk rock? It was an obvious move. I mean, at the time we were uh, we were all in our sort of late teens um, when the band formed, and uh, I'd been through listening to to bands like. Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath when I was growing up, and I'd gotten fed up with all of the sort of you know just I can play faster than you can or we can play louder than you can, and I'd started to listen to songwriters more than than actual sort of musicians. So to to me it started to become more and more about the song, and at the time there were a lot of progressive. They referred to themselves as progressive bands. They were just generally very tedious. Uh, bands like Yes and Genesis and people like that, who, you know, would would write songs that lasted for 15, 20 minutes, and they had more in common with with Rachmaninoff than they had with 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 rock and roll. And uh, I kind of felt that, you know, rock music at the time had lost its way a lot. You know, you you almost had to, you almost felt like you had to go to music school before you could play in a band, which wasn't really what it was all about when it started. You know. So when punk came along and it was just sort of three minutes and kids who couldn't play that well, but but he had this great attitude. Um, you know, I was I, I was a pretty easy convert to it. However, I didn't I didn't think it would last terribly long because, like I said, I was I was becoming more and more attracted to the actual songs and and I liked the songs to be about something. Um, and you know, a lot of punk songs, particularly the early ones, were just sort of short, sharp shock type songs. They were either designed to you know, just say, well, I'm bored, or, you know, um, the things that were just designed to, 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 to shock people a bit. And I didn't think that, that would last terribly long. And then I saw The Clash, uh, or heard The Clash, rather, I didn't see them for some time, but I heard The Clash, and, and they were writing songs about their lives, and about how, you know, they weren't happy with their lives, and things that were going on in them that they felt could be improved upon, and... And I, I realized that that was exactly the sort of thing that, that we should be writing about, you know, because I kind of felt, well, you know, they're living in London, um, which was the greatest respect in the world. Okay, they may not be having the greatest time, but, you know, living in London where you can go out and see a band seven nights a week if you want and you're not going to be at risk of getting blown up or shot struck me as, uh, you know, if they think they've got something to complain about, we've really got something to complain about. So, you know, I, I, that was kind of, that inspired me to write about about my own life and about the lives of my friends. Yeah. And is there a difference between this younger audience and um, the older audience? The older audience drink more beer, the younger audience jump around more. <laughs> but apart from that, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's cool. And there's also different bands that sing about um, these, this topic differently, like the Dropkick Murphys. They sing about, like, they glorify this Irishness. And what do you think about that? Do you think that's good? or? What's your opinion? Well, we know the Murphys quite well. Um, I'm not sure that, I mean, I don't know their material terribly well. I know them as people. They're coming from a different angle. I mean, they're coming from from America, and American Irishism is is a strange thing. It's, you know, it's they've basically gotten their information from either grandparents or parents. So it's, it's, it's second-hand at best and possibly third-hand. Um, so, you know, and it, it's the same with any sort of expatriate group, um, and I don't mean that the, the ones that, that leave the country, I'm talking about their descendants. There's, there's a tendency to romanticize where you come from, um, and, you know, the actual reality of it is, is, isn't, isn't your reality. So, you know, and it, it's, not just, it's not just Irish Americans, I mean, Ital Italian Americans, Greek Americans, they all feel the same way. They all have this strange pining for a country that in a, in a lot of in a lot of cases they haven't ever visited you know um, so you know it, 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 it can be a dangerous thing I don't think I've ever heard the Murphy sing an overtly political song so but I could be wrong um, I'll pay a bit more attention I'm actually going on tour with them on my own in a couple of months so I'll pay more attention when I'm out there with them but uh, no I don't think I, I think they they sort of celebrate more of an idea of Irishness rather than anything specifically political you know and do you have a favorite show you could tell me about something that you say, wow, that was really a cool experience? 
Well, our favourite place to play, and we've said this a lot, is uh, the Barrowland Ballroom in Glasgow, in Scotland. Um, we've literally just, as part of this tour, we, we played there on St. Patrick's Night, and we've, we, we've played there now 26 St. Patrick's Nights in a row. And there's just a, there's a special bond uh, between the band and the audience, and the, and the band and the city, in fact. Um, it's a city that's it's very similar to, to Belfast in a lot of ways. Not all of them good, but uh, the majority of them good. And uh, it was just, you know, it was, from the minute we first played there, they were an incredibly welcoming crowd to us, which is a good thing because we'd heard from a number of bands that the Glasgow audience was one of the hardest in the world. And it's like, you know, sort of, if they like you, they really like you. And if they don't like you, you best get out of town quickly. Uh, luckily, they liked us, um, so uh, you know that's that, that's always the one show that we kind of build our entire year round is is playing there on on St Patrick's Night. Cool.